even if they just want someone else like riled up and brought down to their level, they want you to reflect like, I'm angry, you should be angry. You know, like they're, and if you get mad, you lose because you've now caved to them. You're letting them dictate the pace of the incident. If it's your job to contain incidents and to handle problems, guess what? You have to leave all your personal shit at the door. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, if, if someone comes up to me and I can just tell, everything about them tells me this person probably doesn't like the things I like, probably won't even like my friends, probably has very different political views than I do. If I'm just, you know, J random person, I'll like lean into be like, oh my God, I can't tell you everything wrong in the world. If I'm, if I have my like, I'm in security, if I have that hat on, you have to park that shit. And you have to actually say, what is this person saying? What is driving this person emotionally? Because if you can't track that, if you can't empathize, you cannot solve the problem. Show someone through actual empathy, through body language, through telling them in their own words what they just told you. I'm gonna to totally give Doc Thompson the credit for this one, the way he phrased it. He's like, you know what the most powerful sentence is if you wanna get someone to stop talking? Let me make sure I understand what you just said. Any variation of that is a wonderful tool to have in your back pocket if someone is really hot and bothered and they're saying, yeah, I cannot believe in the thing and this guy out here, dude, you're Donnie Doofus door kicker. Like, you're a phys sec guy, like, I understand you think you know this stuff, but don't tell me how to, you know, talk to victims, because I am a real nice guy, and I've been doing it for years. Okay, I'm really glad that, that you are skilled at that. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I don't talk about it much. I have had weeks of training from the Department of Justice. I am a certified victims counselor. I'm a certified counselor to victims of violent crime. So maybe uh, we can all shut the fuck up in telling me that this isn't my lane because I am square in the middle of it and I will honk my horn right on your bumper if you try to slow down this conversation. This is like shocking to me that everyone needs their hand held on this. But as we have seen, there are a number of people on staff at a number of events that really can't even look beyond their own perspective. They don't have the courage to try to make things better. And I love this last statement here. Recognize the imbalance of power and issues of oppression and privilege. Where do you think I got that statement? No, not from freaking hippy-dippy liberal land. This is, again, I'm, this whole time I'm quoting from DOJ. If the fucking Department of Justice can put this down in black and white in some training materials, I think we can go ahead and say maybe it's not the craziest concept to imagine that you do things your way because of your preconceived notions, and you should get other voices around you Let's say they both go to you know, one of these little like Orlando roadside you know, tiki bar like restaurant type joints, right? Dave watches a hockey game, has five beers. Andrea has her dinner. She has like a glass and a half of wine. Now an hour into this evening, Dave is not legal to drive. Andrea is. They drive home because the drunk driving law didn't stop them, right? If they get pulled over, What's likely to happen? You hear cons that say, we do have a code of conduct, deviant. It's one line. Be excellent to each other. Great. Top notch. And I'm not disparaging this notion. Of course you should be wonderful to one another. That's beautiful. That's not a code of conduct. Any more than this is not a drunk driving law. This is a billboard. And if you just send a bunch of boys in blue out there to enforce the law, and this is the only thing you give them, how's that going to work for Dave? And how's that going to work for Andrea. Drunk driving laws and codes of conduct and specificity of policy exist because we are not perfect. And someone's bad behavior might not be someone else's definition of bad behavior. Someone who is behaving badly might be friends with someone else. Someone who is not friends with anyone might have a real problem and not be listened to. Anyone who says, my event doesn't need a code of conduct because we're doing fine, is either saying that they are perfect or that their attendees are perfect, and both of those things are horseshit. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you can uh, you know, send me hate mail or block me on Twitter, or you can ask me questions if we have uh, crowd mics. Excellent. In addition to being the first known mountain climber to summit nine of the 13 peaks in the presidential range, while wearing a live raccoon as a blindfold, Deviant also became a New York Times best-selling author with his release in 2007 of the three-volume biographical opus, Wax On, Wax Off, Wax Paper, 
the life and baking recipes of Noriyuki Patmorita.